Hello and good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, thank you for joining today's event, where we will present the results from our supply chain and logistics uh, trend study uh, we conducted uh, this year. My name is Johannes Panzer. Uh, I'm a head of industry solutions uh, for e-commerce at Descartes, and I'm your speaker and moderator for today. The nice thing about uh, doing the webinar is that you can literally join from everywhere you want. Um, today, I'm dialing in from our, uh, our, our office in Munich, Germany, where, um, just a quick side note, uh, we have really a beautiful weather uh, out there, a beautiful early summer evening. Uh, I, I think we had almost uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit uh, today. I have my windows open here in the office, so if you hear the birds tweeting, uh, I apologize for that. Before we begin uh, with the presentation, uh, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items, uh, as usual. Um, following the web seminar, we will be distributing the slides uh, to you, as well as a recording uh, of the event. We have a Q&A section, which you, which you might see on the left side of the screen. Um, where you can ask questions uh, or send me a note uh, anytime uh, during the web seminar. And uh, also questions uh, for the Q&A sec uh, section, which we will uh, do at the end of that presentation. Um, for all the questions we couldn't cover, uh, we will follow up with you uh, afterwards. And with that, uh, I'd like to start. So let me give, give me a bit of a, of a background why uh, we conducted uh, that, uh, that survey. There's probably one statement which uh, if you're running an e-commerce business, uh, you're part of an e-commerce organization, which you uh, may confirm, and I'm pretty sure you may confirm that, that being successful uh, has been much easier in the past. Um, so there's one major thing which, which drives you is about like um, getting more revenue, um, being present on new channels, how can you enter and uh, be relevant uh, for new markets. Um, you also deal with um, yeah, new kind of, uh, kind of channels like, like social channels. Facebook, uh, Instagram, and you want to you wanna pick up on all the trends and you, you want to be part of it, like mobile is another trend, which keeps you busy. And on the other side, there are also like legal requirements which you need to fulfill. So you, you are in a project and you are uh, you're, you're trying to, to, to increase the revenue and then you, you also have, uh, have other projects which distract you. Uh, and with all those questions, uh, you, you maybe ask your question like how to earn money in this in this whole game. So let me um, quickly uh, share with you uh, like how the e-commerce market has evolved and with a quite honestly simplified uh, overview. So if you have a look at like the year 2000, um, where like e-commerce really started to become popular. So at that time, people like you and me, we were finally super happy that we could buy product online. Uh, at that time, uh, we didn't have access to, to products uh, offline in the store in our region before, so that was, that was really super. And uh, yeah, so we call those uh, uh, the, the, the type of buyers at that time, like the product buyers, so uh, where products finally became uh, available. A um, couple of years later, um, products became available anywhere, actually, and the number one differentiator became price. So that's why we call people there in that area like the price buyers. This was also really the high season of uh, all those price search engines. And this is where you could make the difference uh, in, like in the 2010s uh, and, and a couple of years uh, around that. Uh, price buyers, they are still there, obviously. Uh, so they're, they're still, and you, you might know that by yourself, so you, there are still uh, situations where you want to buy a product the, the cheapest possible. Um, but what we see more and more, uh, and this is something what we already see now and what we also see for the future is that service buyers um, uh, are, really, uh, are really making making the change now. And this is where we see that there are rising customer expectations, um, which is 
exemplified by different big players um, in various in various ways. But just take as an example, Amazon. They a couple of weeks ago they introduced that one day shipping in North America, um, and already today um, for some products you already can get this one day shipping. Another thing um, Amazon introduced was that Amazon Day, like that dedicated delivery day for your parcels. So um, it's getting more and more complex, uh, but this is also where um, uh, we see, and that's where, where the logistics and supply chain at a broader sense comes into play, um, where, where e-commerce companies and successful players uh, can make the difference. Uh, and a lot of that starts with availability of items. So the supply chain starts where uh, you or me as, an, as, as, a, as a buyer uh, want to buy products online. Um, and because, um, because that is already complex, uh, let me just share with you a quick um, story what happened uh, to me uh, lately, a couple of weeks ago lately. So um, what you see here is uh, one part of, uh, of an ad uh, for a lot, which is, uh, which is on the market um, uh, to buy. So uh, I found that, uh, that ad on, on the internet. Uh, I found that online uh, because uh, I'm currently looking for a lot. And my wife and me, we are currently about to uh, uh, yeah, uh, buy uh, a lot and build a house there. So we found that it's a pretty nice one. So it's, a, it's in a rural area uh, at the end of a, of a small town and uh, looks pretty nice. So what I did, so I, I called um, the broker who had that lot on offer. And I asked him like, if there's something special or if, if, if the, uh, the lot is still available, if we can have a look, if we can visit it. And he said, yeah, sure, no problem, go there. I said that I want to go there on Saturday. And he said, well, uh, we don't have, I don't have, uh, I have another commitment on Saturday, but just give me a call on Monday uh, and tell me how you liked it and if we want to move forward. So what we did, um, so we, 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 we took our car, uh, drove there a um, couple of hours, um, my wife and me, and then uh, we, we drove to the address uh, he gave us. And we came, we came there, we came to the lot, and there was a house standing there. So recently, somebody, um, literally, I mean, already built a house there, uh, and my wife and we were just looking at each other and thinking, like, are they kidding us? Don't, don't they? Do they, don't they take it serious? Do they, I mean, what, what, what's going on? What the hell is going on? That's what we thought about. And um, so, and if you, if you transfer that to the e-commerce, um, it's just kind of like the same situation. So if you want to buy an item online and the online vendor pretends that it's available, but it's, it's simply not. And um, he tells you, or even doesn't tell you that the item doesn't show up after you ordered it, or he tells you, I'm sorry, uh, it's out of stock, um, then this absolutely doesn't create uh, a positive buying experience. I would even say it, it doesn't build up any customer relations. And to be honest with you, uh, from that broker, I would never call that broker again. Absolutely, uh, I'm serious. So, uh, and because like the supply chain and also the, already the start of the supply chain is so important, um, we asked ourselves, like, how do you, how do our customers, how does the market see how things come together here? What are the most important trends and strategies um, in that logistics space in e-commerce? Um, and, and that's why we, we, we conducted that survey. Um, since we are an international company, um, we didn't only focus on North America. Um, we also included uh, our audience and, and markets in Europe. Uh, and that's why uh, we, we could make it like a global uh, survey and could, uh, from, from the findings, from the analysis we, we get out of that survey, uh, some interesting results uh, where we see similarities and differences. So let's have a look uh, at, the basis, uh, at the basics. So whom did we survey uh, and how did we, did we set up this, this study? So altogether, we had 181 participants. Um, we had two-thirds uh, e-commerce vendors. Um, the rest uh, was uh, 3PL companies uh, and, and other, uh, other categories. We had a 60% almost 
sharing uh, a B2B and B2C uh, from, their, uh, from their distribution strategy um, side. We see uh, also 79% uh, shipping parcels and also over 50% uh, less than truckload. Uh, found that pretty interesting uh, here. Um, then between 10 and 20% have an international business going. What's interesting here was that um, it's just an interesting fact from those statistics we, we, we asked for is that um, companies which are based in North America, uh, they have less international business. Companies based out of Europe have more. And what we also saw is that bigger companies tend to have a bigger portion of an international business than, than the smaller companies. Uh, from the regions, we have uh, almost a 50-50, like a 45% America versus 55% uh, Europe um, participants. You, you're going to hear me um, speaking about the top and bottom performers later on uh, in, in the presentation. So what we did, we asked um, the participants about their financial performance. And if they have a strong financial performance, if they, they answer that, uh, we treat them uh, as a top performer, whereas, whereas uh, bottom performer has a weak uh, financial performance. Also, around two thirds of the participants ship more than 500 uh, shipments per day. Yeah, let's, let's could come to one of, uh, that, that's really one of the major findings, uh, what we figured out uh, and what, what you told us and the participants told us is that two thirds um, really see that e-commerce logistics is a key differentiator. So on the one side, like one third, like or a split here is that they see the logistics as a competitive weapon. And at least the other third uh, see that as a competitive uh, customer service differentiator. So um, it's, a big, it's a big topic where uh, you nowadays um, can really make the difference and um, yeah, so uh, that's one of uh, that's really one of the major findings here. Um, before we have a look at the major market developments, let's let's quickly have a look a quick excursion on another study we conducted because I saw that we have quite some uh, some people in the audience today from our uh, forwarder and broker space we conducted and where how how this that people in those this market see e-commerce. Uh, come come uh, come uh, together so we asked uh, within that that broker and forwarder um, survey like how e-commerce is impacting uh, their their industry and besides super interesting facts that um, like visibility of the business processes is, is the top mention so it's really about turning um, the supply chain visible uh, for the clients we, we also saw that um, the direct-to-consumer shipments, this is something which is absolutely on the rise and will definitely change uh, the, the intermediates uh, in the classical and traditional supply chain in that space. What we also saw is that it seems like that uh, in, in the forwarder market that um, more larger companies really see an impact um, by, by e-commerce demand. So on the, on the other side, uh, and this is like an internal question now, so we asked the companies, uh, like, how do, you, how do you capture more of the B2B and B2C e-commerce business in your company? And what's interesting here was that it's kind of like also similar, like large companies, they tend to invest more in e-commerce technology, uh, whereas like um, smaller companies, uh, it seems like they really don't have uh, such a strong focus here. And this... Uh, and, and this is actually pretty interesting because we uh, this raised the question and a couple of questions. So, if, where does that come from? That that um, that small focus or that no focus uh, portion? Is it like missing knowledge? Uh, is it that uh, e-commerce is seen as just for the big players, just for the big guys, um, or is it simply not on the radar because there are so many other opportunities? Um, I think one conclusion here, uh, and this should conclude the, that excursion now, is that um, so also in that industry, like you don't fall just in, into e-commerce. You need to have a strategy in place, um, a proper strategy in place, 
but what you see, like what kind of opportunities, especially in the logistics and supply chain space, there are, um, the, the e-commerce trend study uh, really reveals. So now let's get back um, to, the, to the study results and let's get back to um, the, the question where we asked about the major industry and market developments with, which have the, the greatest impact over the next three uh, to five years. So number three um, mentioned with 27% is shrinking margins. So shrinking margins come from, and, and I mentioned that also before, so costs are raising, uh, the, the costs are just um, getting up, also because there are new marketing channels, there are new sales channels, uh, marketplaces which, uh, which, which, which require more, uh, more, um, more budget. Um, but not only the, the marketing side and the ad, advertor, ad, advertisement side, it's also about fulfillment and logistics costs. It's also about the warehouse costs. So everything here is on its rise. And uh, this is something where people uh, see that this is one of the top three um, developments which will also continue in the next years. Number two with 35% is technology advances. So this is where, uh, and again, this is when you, when, when the, you connect to new channels and when you, you wanna um, increase uh, transparency, um, you need technology. Uh, it's not just about like the, the, the typical buzzwords or uh, industry uh, topics like AI, machine learning, big data. Um, it's about um, connecting systems um, and to provide transparency. And what's, really, what, what's also really important here is that um, it's not just that you have that technology, it's also that you ask the right questions, that you have the right business problems you want to address, you want to get accomplished, um, which where technology can help you. But definitely technology uh, is something which, uh, which, is, which is there and will uh, definitely also be there. Uh, and, and of more importance in the future. The number one, um, this was mentioned already uh, by, by the other two as a side note, marketplace and channel strategies with 40%. So this is really, uh, and if you, uh, quite an easy example when you have a look at how the product search, the first product search uh, changed over the last couple of years, which was in the past always Google, uh, and which, which, which turned into that the first product search uh, has become uh, the Amazon page, uh, the Amazon portal. Um, this is where, where you see that, that technology is really important to keep up uh, and to be, uh, yeah, to be ahead of the game. When you look at, at these trends, um, the following question uh, pops up. Uh, the question about like, how do you, I mean, what, do you ex what kind of growth are you expecting within the next two to three years? Um, and so before I reveal like the, 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 the results here, um, I would like to ask you, like, just think about like where in which area would you, would you put yourself, would you put your company and your company growth? So from shrinking to limited growth uh, to less than five, five, or even greater than 15%. So let's, uh, let's start from, from the right. Um, shrinking, zero. So nobody said it's shrinking. So the, it, that's, that's one indicator um, that we are in a, in, a, in a growth market here, right? Um, limited or no growth, 7%. Less than five also uh, quite similar. Um, the absolute majority um, said that it's between five and 15 and greater than, than 15% said still one third uh, of the participants um, said that they are growing more than 15%. So I think this is really um, uh, where you can conclude as a statement that uh, the e-commerce is a growth market. This is kind of obvious and also discussed a lot in the media, uh, but this is also what we see here um, in, uh, from, based from that, from that question. And so when you see all that growth and you see the, those, those trends which are coming, which may, may look a bit like, um, make you a bit afraid probably, You ask yourself, is sustainable growth even possible? So um, if, you, if you think about like, and I would like to quickly explain you that kind of triangle here. 
um, if your main goal is like um, growth, so company growth um, via uh, new channels, new marketplaces, um, this is something where you can achieve uh, new revenue, right? Um, on, the, on the other side, um, we, uh, we see like the shrinking, the shrinking margins. So the shrinking margins, um, which are related to costs. So if you want to grow, if you want to sustainably grow, uh, you need to have your costs under control. And uh, on the other side, the, 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 what, I, what I call your experience, this is where through technology advances, uh, which is one of uh, the trends from the next, for, for, the next, uh, for the next years, this is where you, you can leverage technology uh, and make the difference and provide uh, a better and greater uh, custom experience. And all those three elements um, uh, work together uh, that you you can be sustainable uh, with your so have a sustainable growth of your of your business. So how do the 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 tactics and the strategies of the top performers look like? So uh, I, I listed the, the top four here, um, which uh, starting let's start with the number one uh, is uh, the tactic is like offering new shipping options and delivery services to to the customers fifty eight percent. Um, almost half of the people, 47, said optimizing pick, pack, and ship. So this is again where uh, like uh, the productivity increase uh, uh, comes in. When you talk about optimizing returns process, it's seven, uh, 33% said that they are optimizing their returns. So just having consider that when you ship, just as an example, 1,000 shipments per day, and you're in fashion industry, you get up to 50% returns. Um, you definitely focus on your outbound, uh, but you also need to absolutely focus on your inbound, on your returns, um, to to don't um, lose too much money and to, to to put the returns back into the sales process that uh, you can you can still keep up the margin at the right level. And number four is the real-time tracking uh, of packages. So I also mentioned that uh, kind of customer-facing supply chain uh, uh, earlier. It's really about like keeping the customers informed. And this is also something you can yeah, leverage by uh, technology um, uh, and to make the difference uh, to provide a great service uh, for, for your customer. So let's let's pick the the first one, uh, the shipping options. Um, there is a debate going on uh, in the market, which is kind of like it's misleading or it's not 100% correct. So uh, there's a lot of focus on shipping and delivering faster and faster and faster. That only faster is just simply not true. In fact, um, nowadays it's possible to ship faster. I also mentioned that, stated that before, like uh, big players are exemplifying that. Um, but what consumers really want is that they have the, that they have the choice. So in whichever situation, in whichever buying situation they're in, they want to have the choice and they want to be, be able to select that. And if you can provide that as an e-commerce company, uh, then you, you can make the difference here. So let me quickly go through uh, like a matrix uh, we developed on on those different customer segments. Um, like the first one, which we call the cost, cost, cost. This is where you, you buy products online. You buy them, for example, um, from whatever wish.com or whatever um, uh, e-commerce store or from China or from an anywhere because you know that you want to buy it at the cheapest price. No problem for you to wait for 30 days or um, I don't know it's even even longer, but you def definitely your the precision when you expect the items uh, is it doesn't matter so much. On the other side, the next uh, the next quadrant is the personal mentality. This is like like really the the, the kind of like um, usual approach when you order something uh, for your home for on, uh, online. So this is can be like an, really anything like fashion books or whatever kind of gadgets you, you order that uh, you expect kind of a fast delivery, but not as precise, not as accurate in when it really shows up, but like two to three days and then uh, you are satisfied. The next section is about what we call the time is their currency. 
So here it's really like, let's say the new iPhone X, Y, whatever uh, has been launched uh, and I want to have it tomorrow, then I definitely pay another 20 bucks for uh, an express shipment and for the, I mean, for getting it as fast as possible. Uh, and one of the most, and, and this is, I mentioned that already before, one of the probably most interesting ones is that convenience matters. And this is what we also see, which, which we see more and more, uh, is that where the precision is really tight and the speed is really depending on the customer's needs. So just imagine, um, as an example, I'm uh, you're moving in a new flat uh, and you're moving in um, the, on the first uh, of the month. Um, you, you get your keys on the 30th, uh, so you order your new bed uh, for the 30th uh, of the month before. Um, you're expecting that delivery on the day when you get the keys um, because that's the first night when you want to sleep uh, in your new flat. So if it comes one day earlier, that's a bit of a pity because you don't have the keys. If it's one day later, um, you're upset because you slept on the floor for one night. So um, some some statistics from from what we could get out of the survey is that this kind of and this has to do with dedicated time windows, right? So over 50% of the participants say that uh, time window. This is something which uh, which is on uh, time window delivery, which is on the rise, um, and. Also, in terms of like, um, and this was from another question that in North America, we, we figured out that over 56% say that express shipping uh, seems to be, uh, by, by their competition, seems to be hard to compete with. Um, whereas in Europe, uh, that's much less. So one of the explanations here is that like delivery uh, in general, um, takes longer in North America due to longer distances usually, where in Europe, where we have a lot of kind of small domestic markets that express shipment, uh, what, what you have in North America, uh, it's already like a regular shipment, but it, because it just takes one day uh, to, to, to cross like uh, 500 miles. So, um, Fast shipment, obviously that's that's important and uh, that's what 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 we are what customers are expecting. Um, but it's not just like the, the fast delivery; it's also about like how your your throughput time uh, looks like. And again, I would like to um, ask you to also think about like where in this in these answers, like from. Uh, less than 12 hours between 12 and 24, 24 and 48, or more than 48 hours, um, do you see your, your throughput time? Okay, let's, let's, let's start uh, the other way around. So we asked um, the audience uh, or the, the participants, like, um, who for whom it takes more than 48 hours, it was to 6%. Um, between one day and two, uh, we had already 19. Uh, 44%, so almost half of the um, participants said that they are between like 12 hours and one day. And 31% uh, say that it's in less than 12 hours. So when you take a look at the less than 12 hours uh, and you do a split, uh, because this was like uh, global uh, all answers, and you do a split by the top performers and the bottom performers, you see that even more uh, top performers uh, achieve that less than, uh, less than 12 hours. What was um, pretty interesting um, to see was that uh, there was no real differences in, in the respondents from between large and small companies. So the throughput time in general was quite similar. And also between North America and Europe, um, the throughput time was also not recognizably uh, different um, when you compare the regions. Um, there's one uh, note we, 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 we already took as an action item for next year. Um, so since we have like a lot of people, uh, a lot of top performers in that, in that less than 12 hours section, 
Um, and I lately wrote an article about like the average uh, throughput time of Amazon, which is, seems to be four hours. So we will definitely go to the left uh, next year and extend uh, the possibilities for answers uh, for a shorter, uh, shorter period. So a fast throughput time is nice, but is that also economic uh, or is it just eating profit? So I, I brought one example uh, of one of our clients uh, based out of um, Berlin, um, Germany, uh, called maskworld.com. They are selling masks and disguise. And they have implemented um, our uh, technology uh, and using multi-order picking strategies um, uh, and they're using a warehouse um, put away principle, uh, which also Amazon uses, by the way, um, which is called chaotic storage. Uh, chaotic storage simply means that you can put items anywhere uh, in the warehouse. Um, you just need to assign uh, the items which have a barcode to a bin, uh, which is at a bin place in the warehouse, and the system then knows uh, where your items are. So this has several advantages. So one advantage is, app is definitely that you save um, a lot of warehouse space uh, and you also reduce uh, errors during the pick process because uh, you, if you by intention not put the same items or similar items in one bin, um, you can't make a mistake. For example, uh, when you pick like two t-shirts, uh, in uh, you pick one t-shirt and there are two ins in there with the same color but different sizes, uh, so there's just one t-shirt in there, we definitely pick the right one. And the good thing, and this is what I was wanted to refer to, is that so with, with, that, uh, with using our technology, they are um, saving up to $600,000 um, uh, per year uh, through a tremendous increase uh, of their uh, productivity. So pick, pack, and ship, we saw it, it's, it's a big topic. Another big topic um, here is, uh, is the, the last mile uh, delivery. And I would like to ask you, um, before I, 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 I move on, like, um, I would be super interested in like, whom of you is like, involved in, in home delivery, who is thinking about like, um, delivering um, orders um, with an own fleet, with a dedicated fleet? Um, just drop me a quick note in, in the Q&A. Uh, would be super interested uh, in, getting your, in, in getting your input here. Um, so there's one statement I have here. Um, owning the last mile uh, can be worth it. So if you have a look at that diagram and you have a look at the current market situation and you probably uh, can also confirm that, uh, that you recognize that shipping costs are getting more, getting higher every year. So it's not just that the, that the, um, uh, it's not just that the, the fees of the, for the carriers, but it's also like harder to find uh, employees for the carriers. So it's, uh, we, we, we talked about that capacity crunch. So shipping costs are, 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 are growing. Uh, and there is one point where, uh, when you consider like an own shipping or a shipping with several uh, e-commerce vendors as in kind of an alliance or some kind of pooling concept um, with, with, with final mile distribution, it can really be worth it. And uh, it's not just that it can be worth that, that this can be worth it. You can also, um, through owning that last mile delivery and that, that process until the doorstep, you can really extend um, your, uh, your 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 branding uh, until uh, until the doorstep of the customer. So it's potential for additional up and cross selling. Uh, so for example, if you uh, you are uh, shipping appliances, obviously you have a setup service which you can include. Uh, but also um, for the fashion industry, it could be uh, possible that you have some some further accessories which you bring until the doorstep. Um, so uh, a seamless process is here. Uh, the key, and this is also what the customers would recognize, um, uh, yeah, until he gets the, the package delivered. From a cost perspective, obviously, um, they're, um, they, they can be higher than uh, until a certain uh, until a certain amount, but um, the, the the potential, and this is again something what 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 our customers 
are, are telling us and, and they uh, recognize is that they really turn their home delivery, um, uh, their home delivery unit into uh, a big profit center and it's a, in a key differentiator uh, for, for their business. So one of the findings from the study is also that 17%, um, not so many, but, but already uh, like 17% of the top players already focus on home delivery. And I really believe that this is something uh, which will definitely increase uh, also for more, uh, more other companies uh, involved uh, in the e-commerce market. So I brought um, two examples um, from our clients, um, how our customers make the difference uh, by offering last mile services. The one is John Lewis. Um, this is uh, uh, a company uh, based in, in UK. They are selling a lot of different uh, products, also big TVs, um, uh, couches, uh, and appliances. And for, for, for their customers in the UK, they offer a time window um, selection, which, which is, which is uh, matched uh, towards their capacity they're having. So customers can select uh, certain time windows, and they know that they can fulfill that. Uh, they also offer standard four-hour, two-hour slots, and the next day and same day. So really a lot of services, also additional um, setup services for the TV, for example, uh, where they, they really provide a full service uh, for their customers and a great customer experience. Another example, um, this is a company um, from Australia, Origin Energy. They are selling uh, propane gas. Um, they uh, implemented, uh, and they are they're having their own fleets, uh, and they implemented like real-time real tracking solutions where they uh, offer um, until the last mile really the customer the full transparency. I mentioned that customer-facing supply chain before a couple of times. Uh, this is really best practice. They even if they, you can see the truck when it's uh, when it's on its way, um, when it's in the neighborhood, and even if it's delayed for 20 minutes, um, they the customers get pushed through with a notification uh, that, the, that the driver is coming later, uh, and so with that kind of process, the customer is involved um, throughout the process. It's time for some final conclusion uh, from our from this year's study. We uh, definitely can say that technology uh, is driving the growth, the growth in e-commerce. Um, we see that 43% of the top performers, so almost half of them, see an increase, expect an increase of the IT expenses of more than 5%. This is this is uh, this is really a big number. Um, we uh, see that over half of the IT investments um, go into, into connections, connections into new channels, uh, to business partners, uh, to increase visibility and transparency, go into warehouse optimization, and also into the carrier integrations, because the carrier is also um, a big topic and where uh, you can also um, yeah, create the, the customer facing supply chain uh, and improve the visibility here. Finally, um, one third, like 32% of the top performers, they treat them, themselves as early adopters versus 13% uh, of the bottom performers. So another uh, great figure uh, to, to draw that conclusion that technology um, is driving the growth. So there are um, absolutely more results. Um, and if you would like to get a copy, um, please send us a quick note, either through the, the Q&A, um, send us an email um, to info at daycart.com. Uh, we are more than willing to, to, to send a copy over. Um, yeah, so, and we have uh, already a new study uh, planned. So the next study will be, uh, launch it, will, will be launched in fall 2019. I uh, would really appreciate uh, if, uh, if you uh, would be part of it and then also obviously be part uh, of the results uh, when we see each other uh, next year. We are now opening the Q&A um, session. 
Uh, and all, as I also said initially, um, all the questions which we, we won't discuss today, or we don't have uh, time to go through them, uh, we will be uh, following up with you afterwards. So I give you some moments to, to type in your questions uh, if you if you haven't already. Um, otherwise, I will um, pick them as they as they are coming in. Okay, I have one question here already, um, or oh, the first one, a couple more. Um, I'm reading a question now. Comparing North America and Europe, uh, did you learn? Anything on how companies are acting differently when they are improving their supply chain processes? So I think what what I was expecting at least uh, was when 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 I talked about the, the throughput times. So here this was pretty interesting that we see really a lot of similarities um, where I was expecting uh, some some differences, um, obviously. Uh, but like well, if you talk about differences. Um, so we definitely see that like um, topics like real-time tracking of packages is a bigger topic in North America uh, with, with 23%. Um, this, um, yeah, so uh, I think I also mentioned that before. So uh, the distances, the delivery um, times um, are longer uh, in North America. And I think that's why it's even more critical and more important that um, the tracking of packages is, um, Tracking of packages uh, is uh, yeah improves and that that real time capabilities are there. Uh, on the other side, what we also see that in Europe uh, as uh, as a difference is that um, European players see a bigger focus on warehouse automation. Um, this is also pretty interesting because um, it seems like um, like warehouse space is probably a bit more critical in Europe, where warehouse space is less critical uh, North America. So there are some differences, um, some interesting ones. So um, obviously there's, there are also some more. Um, just uh, give us, send us a quick note and we will send you the study to, that you can also explore more uh, differences. But that, those would, I would say, are the, the, the most important ones. Okay, the next question I have here, uh, are there regional differences where companies uh, see concerns by the competition? Um, yeah, so uh, what, what we saw uh, in, in the survey is that um, over half of the respondents in North America, they see that free express shipping as a greater concern. Um, I explained that also uh, a couple of minutes ago, uh, that this is uh, something which, because delivery simply, it, it's kind of similar as the topic I mentioned before. Um, but what also was pretty interesting is that over uh, half of the respondents said that, had, um, that they are concerned about the time window offerings uh, their competition uh, is offering. So, um, uh, yeah, so this is, it seems like this is one of their, their, their greatest concerns. Um, I have another question here, um, which came in. What do you know about small and medium businesses investing in logistics technology? Um, this is, um, uh, this is also pretty interesting. This is where we did not um, see um, uh, major differences. Uh, so we see that uh, it's really depending on, uh, on, on, on the top performers who really plan to invest more. And yeah, so uh, not really a big difference. Um, but as I said, so the top performing companies here where uh, investments in logistics technology really make the difference, they are definitely spending more uh, in, uh, yeah, in, in, in that space. Uh, yeah, and as I said, so um, we will uh, just drop us a note and we will send you, send you the results. Uh, and there are also some more, uh, some more KPIs, some more statistics, which we can, which we can definitely share with you.
Okay. Um, I think if there are no further questions, um, then um, yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, we will uh, close the session. Uh, thank you again for for joining. Uh, and I'm looking forward uh, and uh, would really appreciate uh, you being part of our study next year. Have a nice rest of the day and goodbye.